Good morning, welcome to St. Jude's for service of morning prayer for Holy Cross Day. We're using the Book of Common Prayer from page 5. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being may require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life in the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us, we pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Amen. Why do the heathen so furiously rage together, and why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth stand up, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh them to scorn, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will preach the law whereof the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Desire of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt bruise them with a rod of iron, and break them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be learned, ye that are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord in fear, and rejoice unto him with reverence. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. And so ye perish from the right way. If his wrath is candle kindled, yea, but a little, Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. 
Now that serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. <clears throat> he said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? Sorry about that, my cat's causing trouble. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me, gave, gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee, cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sitteth at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless, bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever world without end. That safe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. A second lesson is from... Mark chapter 12, beginning the 27th verse. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I 
when I am lifted up from the earth will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. And crowds, the crowds answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overcome you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us but only Thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, the Word made flesh, grant us the courage to take up our cross, and to bear it gladly for the sake of the Gospel risking mockery and rejection, following the example of Jesus. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, who save us with perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Today is Holy Cross Day, which is also known as the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, and various other names. It celebrates every year on the 14th of September three separate events are low linked. The first is the finding of the true cross by St. Helena. The second is the dedication of churches built by the Emperor Constantine on the site of the Holy Sepulchre and Mount Calvary. So specifically the date of the dedication of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, 335 AD. And thirdly, the restoration of the true cross to Jerusalem 300 years later in 629 uh, by the Byzantine Emperor, the Roman Emperor um, Heraclius, after it had fallen into the hands of the Persians with the Persian conquest of Jerusalem in 614. So, combination of historical events. The first one, of course, the finding of the true cross. Tradition tells us that in 600 and, sorry, 326, Saint Helena, who was the, the Christian mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, when on pilgrimage to Jerusalem, uh, discovered the cross. It was specifically the bishop of Jerusalem at the time was causing excavations to be made in order to, to find the exact location of Calvary as well as the Holy Sepulchre. And it was in the course of those excavations that the wood of the cross was recovered. And it was deemed uh, to be authentic by, um, by Bishop uh, uh, Macarius of Jerusalem. Uh, among other things, the evidence included the fact that the crosses of the two thieves were also recovered. And of course, the result was that they built the Basilica or Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, but as I say, it's, com it's a combination of these of those three events. So the first two I've already mentioned, the discovery of the cross and the building of churches to, to house the cross and to commemorate the discovery of the cross. The third thing was, of course, uh, 300 years later, when the cross was seized by the Persians. And of course, you know, that caused great consternation among, uh, throughout Christendom. Fortunately, whoever it was recovered uh, only a few years later. And of course, that caused itself reason to be celebrated or gave reason to, for celebration. Now, the date, uh, originally we actually had two separate festivals in um, September, which is the finding of the, of the cross. Um, and also, um, sorry, in September was the was the recovery of the cross, and in May it was the finding of the cross. But they, we've now combined the two two festivals for one date. But what do we do specifically on Holy Cross Day? Well, apart from a church service, it's the date on which you mark one of the four ember days of the year. Now, an ember day. Uh, basically, the, the term ember doesn't have anything to do with fires. It's got it's a poor translation or a revival of a survival of a translation. Basically, meaning it's a quarter day essentially. So there are four of them in the course of the year, and on those days, essentially, it's a question of prayer, abstinence, and fasting. So, for example, Whitsun is another date on which you calculate an ember day. So ember days for Holy Cross Day are the Saint Wednesday. Friday and Saturday following the day. So tomorrow, Friday and Saturday are uh, ember days, which historically were days of uh, prayer, abstinence and fasting. Of course, Friday being uh, particularly significant because, of course, you know, you're reduced to consumption of meat, of fish on that day anyway. So essentially you have to abstain from all meat or fish products on that day. Uh, whether you mark the ember days nowadays or not is entirely a personal thing, just as all so-called holy days of obligation nowadays we do tend to see as being somewhat more um, up to people's individual consciences and it's of course practicality as well i think when we're in lockdown it's probably easier to mark a day of fasting prayer and abstinence because most of us don't have a lot of other things to do anyway and uh, in terms of supply of food and so on it might be easier to have a day of abstinence the point is the, the prayer, the abstinence and fasting is for a reason. It's not just the church thinks it's a good idea to make people go hungry. The point of the fasting, the prayer and the abstinence is to thank God for the gifts of nature, to teach us to make use of them in moderation and to assist the needy. Those, in other words, who fast not because of choice or religious conviction, but because they don't have food. So on that note, 
Fare well, you all. God bless you.